starting uh, with its name for Francis Marion, the Swamp Fox. Uh, Marion County in its location is very rich in heritage. Some of the first settlers into Marion County were the Prickets and the Flemings and, and the Morgans. I think where we are situated in north central West Virginia, uh, the whole area opened up the entire entrance into what we call Central Appalachia, for that's what West Virginia is. And here in north central West Virginia, we're in the heart of the heart of Appalachia. I think all of our small towns um, in our county, each are so individual and so interesting and many of them have uh, come about through first being, well, little villages and then being mining communities. We need to show what we did and what we have done for our nation through coal mining it would be interesting to any visitor and would be interesting to local people because we're starting to forget even our, our recent history. We're very fortunate that we have several locations where people who are interested in early settlements, in the Civil War, in the Revolutionary War, that can go and see some of the relics from those from that past life. We have the Hamilton Round Barn in Mannington, West Virginia. We also have the Wilson School Museum that is run by the West Augusta Historic Society. There you will find relics from Francis Pierpont, the governor of West Virginia, uh, all the way to present day. We also have the Marion County Historic Society Museum and Jail where visitors can go in and learn a little bit more about Fairmont area, Marion County, also the Revolutionary War, the Civil War. They have relics there that include the compass that George Washington would have used to survey what is now present day West Virginia. Schools are now starting to bring classes to bring their students and, and youth groups such as scouts are starting to come and we tell them the story. We do storytelling. We encourage them to study the history of West Virginia. Get a pepperoni bun. We are the pepperoni bun capital, you know, of, of America. And why is that? It's because of the Italian immigrants who came and worked in these mines in Grand Town and in Mononga. And it was a food source, you see. So we study the Italian culture here because of that. The gentleman would take the pepperoni and wrap the bread around it. So then he had the idea, why not just go ahead and bake the pepperoni in the bread? Well, his fellow workers were so intrigued by that idea that they would ask him to bring them pepperoni rolls as well. And before you know it, he quit the mines and opened up his own business. And today, Country Club Bakery is still in existence selling pepperoni rolls by the dozens all over the state. It's just good, you know, I mean, just the pep the sticks of the pepperoni, you know, and then if you put the sauce, cheese, and peppers, it just has such a, you know, unique and different taste, and it's really good, and people just seem to really like it from all over, you know, and are willing to try it, and, you know, when people travel, they like to taste things that are unique to the area. So, and you can't get it anywhere but in West Virginia. And it's funny, when you live in Marion County, you just assume everybody knows what a pepperoni roll is, but that is something that's very unique to our area. And when people have moved away from the area, one of the things they do when they come back to the uh, area is to make sure that they take pepperoni rolls back with them. We've had so many different groupings of people who have come here and they have left a powerful layering of their stories, their beliefs, their attitudes, their traditions go out to Prickett's Fort. You will understand the Anglo-Celtic people there. And you will understand the Native American people. Prickett's Fort is an outdoor living uh, history oriented museum. Uh, there's a lot of them in the country. There's only two forts in the state of West Virginia that are, uh, have been reconstructed. Uh, us and uh, Fort Randolph. Uh, both built for the bicentennial. People that come here have been to Williamsburg. And they've done, you know, usually go to historic sites, and uh, they they do just like I do. They're tourists when they go go places, and they they want to see those things. And we try to send them all away, uh, at least to learn something about the 18th century and 
uh, get a better understanding of what the 18th century interpreter is and things like that. So. The Berryville covered bridge, of course, is, is very interesting to, to see. There are many people who have never seen a covered bridge. And better look fast because the covered bridges are disappearing throughout our country, throughout the whole United States. And we're very fortunate to have, have the one, and it's been loved and taken care of uh, by the people of the county and by the people of Berwickville. There are so many things to find here. Uh, I think maybe, maybe because of our Civil War history, perhaps because we're the home of Francis H. Pierpont, who's considered the father of West Virginia. We don't have his house to look at, but we, we can visit his town and find out about him. And he was quite an interesting fellow. He's a very clever man. He and Watson and some of those coal barons knew that after the Civil War, this area would be opened up for coal and gas and oil. What I think is if you're interested in the beginning of West Virginia and you're interested in the history of West Virginia, you need to visit Fairmont. And that's particularly important. <laughs>